In the previous example, we've looked at how to determine electric field from point charges. Now we want to scale that up so that we can find the electric field due to various continuous charge distributions. The first type of charge distribution that we want to talk about is a line charge. So let's just say we have some line that looks like this, and we have various charges distributed along that line. So we want to describe a few things about this. We can talk about its charge density, its differential charge, and its total charge. So for a line charge, we're going to define the charge density as rho sub L. So our charge density is rho sub L, and dimensionally that charge density is going to equal coulombs per meter. And so it's very important that we don't get this rho mixed up with our rho from our previous chapter where we were talking about cylindrical coordinates. So oftentimes we'll use rho to indicate a charge density. So just make sure you're clear on which, which rho means what. We can also talk about a differential charge along this line. And so if we think about a dq along some segment of this line, it's going to be how much charge density do we have times the differential length dl that we travel along this line. So essentially we're looking at some small differential length and we're saying how much charge is in that differential length. And so what you can see we're working up to with this is ultimately we're going to, we're going to be setting up and evaluating integrals. So if we have some finite line, or really if in general we could have an infinite line, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, we can talk about the total charge Q on that line, which is just going to be the integral over the line of the charge density times dl. So the integral of that differential charge over the entire line. So ultimately though, we don't want the charge, but we want to find the electric field from this line. And so what we can sort of do is we can think of it as summing our contributions from the various charges along the line. So summing contributions from charges along the line. And so of course we're still using Coulomb's law and we'll come back later and we'll look at an alternative way to do this with Gauss's law. But essentially we can think of it as a whole lot of point charges sort of aligned along this charge line here. And so what we can do mathematically is we can take our previous equation we had for electric field in terms of a point charge, integrate over that line, and what we get is that our electric field is equal to the integral over the line of, and in the numerator of our fraction we have rho L dL, so that's our differential charge, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r squared in our u of r direction. And so this is just a general equation, and so it's important to note that depending on the specific problem that we're working with, we're going to have to figure out what this r is, what our unit vector in the r direction is, as well as what our dl is. So keep in mind, again, this is just a general equation. Uh, we're going to have to adjust that a little bit to have it work in a specific circumstance. And so we'll look at some examples of different distributions in later videos. So the next type of charge distribution that we can talk about is a surface charge. And so with a sur surface charge, we just have some arbitrary surface. And on this surface, we have some distribution of charges. And so just like with our line charge, we can talk about charge density. In this case, we're going to represent it as rho sub s. So our rho sub s is dimensionally equal to coulombs per square meter. Our differential charge we can define as dq is equal to, oops, trying to move all of this and just got the actual, well, let's try again. Okay, some more space to write the dq here. So we've got our differential charge is going to be that charge density rho sub s times a differential surface area ds. We can then calculate our total charge q the same way we did with our line charge, just by integrating over the entire surface. So integral over s of rho s ds gives us our total charge on the surface. Now, if we want to find an expression for the electric field, we're going to use the same idea we did with the line charge. We're essentially just saying we have a bunch of point charges across this surface, through all parts of the surface, and ultimately what we do is we go back to our 
electric field equation for point charges, we substitute in dq and we integrate over the surface. And what that gives us is we have our electric field is equal to the integral over the surface. And the only difference here from our previous equation is now our dq is rho s ds. So our denominator is still the same, four pi epsilon naught r squared, and we're still going in the r direction. So just like with the case for our line charge, this obviously also is a general equation, and we would need to determine values for r, direction of u of r, and our ds for a particular problem. The last type of charge distribution that we can have is a volume charge. And so I've already got our volume charge drawn over here. So for instance, the sphere, of course, it could be any three-dimensional volume. And we're going to represent our charge density as rho sub v. And again, keep in mind, all of these rho values are different than the rho for cylindrical coordinates. So dimensionally, our volume charge density is coulombs per cubic meter. We can describe the differential charge dq as rho v times some differential volume dv. And our total charge is just equal to the integral of that dq over the volume. So integral over the volume of rho v dv. Same exact idea, we can go back to that general electric field equation. We can say really we just have a bunch of point charges throughout that volume, such that our electric field is equal to the integral over the volume and once again, we're just going to change our dq in the numerator. Now it's rho v dv, same denominator of 4 pi epsilon naught r squared, same direction of r. And once again, this is a general equation. And depending on the specific problem, we're going to have to determine the value of r, the direction of r, and our differential volume. And so that's what we're going to look in the following videos is we're going to look at some arbitrary distributions, some line charges, surface charges, and volume charges, and we're gonna see how we can utilize these three general equations in order to get a specific equation for that distribution.